I'm Hans Fedro, and you're watching for BaseballersOnly.com. Hi everyone, John Liebman here. You're watching for BaseBlayersOnly.com. We're coming to you today from the Warwick booth at the 2019 Winter NAM Show, Anaheim, California, with our old friend Hansford Rowe. How are you, Hansford? I'm fine. Good to see you, John. It's good to see you again. We've been in contact here and there in Germany and NAM shows and things like that. We actually did an interview. It was an online interview, and I think that was way back in 2012. You're probably Some, right. Thanks. You're better with the dates than I am. Well, I cheated because I looked at it the, <laughs> this morning, but that was, you know, hours ago, so how am I supposed to remember that? But I do remember you were talking about something called just intonation. That what is what, some, what is that? It's one of my uh, passions, and I've been... In layman's terms, okay. so, so I could understand it, because I'm just not a really quick, a... Tech. Quick definition. But if you go to ForBassPlayers.com... ForBassPlayersOnly.com. Only.com. Okay. There's a video that you have which is an explanation of just intonation it's one of those we did six videos yeah oh that's right and you'd have to search for hansford row r-o-w-e at for bass players only right. com. Oh, once right. you get to the site yeah right it, it's just an alternate tuning system where i can play notes from the harmonic series intervals that are the size that are not based on 12 tone equal they're based on the harmonic series as a source of intervallic relationships so it's all natural. Any of the you know harmonics you would play on a string, those are going to be the size of the of the intervals exactly, not some twelve tone equal approximation. So if I play the third harmonic, you get a perfect fifth, right? If I play the fifth harmonic, you get a major third. Those are just your basic harmonics going up the string. But we use those either with specially fretted instruments or on fretless, so that we have access only to those notes and not to some equal tempered version okay so to our western ears would it sound perfectly in tune or would it sound like some bizarre tuning that is used well, in some other cultures the tuning system itself doesn't spell out what kind of genre of music you're going to do it's just the notes right it's just the, the right the, i'm the not universe. talking about the genre i'm talking about the pitch are we talking quarter right. tones or you know right well quarter tones would be an equal division of the octave like 12 tone and then half of that would be quarter tone but that's a tempered equal division of the octave in just intonation it's not one uh equally divided up series of steps because there's things like 19 and 31 tone which are also equal divisions but just smaller right in just intonation the idea is that all the intervals are derived from the harmonic series so you don't have a tempered scale or a tempered fretboard, right? Where it's equally getting the same distance between each fret. You have specific notes in specific keys. And if you play l notes that are low in the harmonic series, like your fifth and your fourth and your major third and, and, and easy multiplications of that, like major sixth and so forth, seconds, it's gonna sound very like what you're used to in 12 tone because they're they're within the harmonic limit of 12 tone which is about five limit fifth harmonic is about as far out as you're going to hear relationships right the fifth harmonic is the major third so anything up to the major third and and multiples of that so you could go as you go up to the major third let me just do it quickly your first harmonic is the one the second harmonic is the octave the third divides the string in three parts that's your perfect fifth the fourth harmonic is an octave of the octave, two, you know, one, two, four. The fifth harmonic, being a prime number, gives you a new series of relationships to everything before. That gives you a major third, the fifth harmonic, right above the fourth fret, right? If you play that harmonic, you get a major third, but it's not in tune with the 12-tone major third. It's a little bit flat, right? So it's very just. If I use that as my major third, I'm at a five limit. Then I can add to that any of the pre preceding intervals, right? So if I had a perfect fourth and a perfect fifth getting there, I can go up a perfect fourth or a perfect fifth from my major third or any of the preceding intervals, right? Well, how do you get there, though? Do you need a special instrument to get that tuning? You either need a fretless and to listen and do it yourself, okay. or you need a, a specially fretted instrument or a keyboard that's tuned to specific notes for each key. And I've been doing this for many, many years, primarily with John Kattler, who's a New York guitar player and the great, great innovator in Justin Tenation. But I also play with Lamont Young, who's one of the original 
users of, of, of Just Intonation as a tuning system. He lives in New York. He's, he's the founder of the downtown minimalist era of that Terry Riley came out of and John Cage and so forth. And he's, he's an old guru now. And I, I, I play bass with him when he does shows. Um, and he does them in a real minimalist way, like once a year and one show per week. And sometimes we play a raga or a, or a long chord for a long time. It's very minimalist. It's a good thing you're a bass player because <laughs> I've always heard, I've always said, you know, if the bass is out of tune, the whole band's out of tune. Yeah, well, think we about it. From the ground up, you know, in general, we relate to what's lower. You relate what's higher to what's lower. And it's generally the way the ear hears things and the way we tune. It's why the bass is a, a really, you know, ultimate instrument. Fascinating stuff. Let's talk more about you and your career. You've played with everyone from Alan Holdsworth to Steve Winwood and Gary Husband, and the list goes on and on. What's keeping you busy now? What's what's going on? Well. I'm older now, and so I mostly just play with the trio I have, which I've done two projects in the last few years with. One was called HR3, with this young guitarist named Julian Sandiford, who I think is a prodigy and a wonderful artist. And our latest record, which just came out last year, is called um, Decadence. The band is Gong Expresso. I got two of my old friends from the Gong days. I played in Gong in the 70s and Julian and myself, and we went to Paris and we recorded a record. It's instrumental, It's I suppose you would call it jazz rock. Um, and it's released on vinyl. It's on vinyl and CD. Is it only on vinyl? Oh, no, you can get it and, and downloads too. It's it's on the internet, uh, and you'll find it. Okay. You're older, yet you're still hip. Thank you. <laughs> How kind of you to say. Well, Julian is, I've been working with him for six years and he's 26. So it's very cool. We have a strong, strong thing going. We're working on a new project now okay. for 2019. I did mention that we're at the Warwick booth. Tell me about your gear, starting with Warwick. Well, I've been with Warwick's. I think I may be one of, I'm certainly one of the longest term uh, endorsers. I've been with them since 86, I think. Wow. Yeah. They started in what, 84, I think. Yeah, it was the second year. And uh, HP's always been good to me, and um, I have a lot of bases that are custom made to play in just intonation, for instance. Um, and I have, uh, I play, you know, fretted and fretless and specially fretted Warwick's, usually five string thumbs, but I have a variety of them. And then um, I'm using right now Ashdown amps. I'm a, I'm a big fan of uh, what Mark Gooday does, and. Uh, Mark and Dan Gooday. Right? Yes, yes. Uh, he's great. Um, he also loves cars, so we get oh, along really well. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, then strings. I, sorry. Strings. Strings. I use DR, and I, I I've been using them forever. It's, I forget how many years, but forever and ever. I use high beams mostly. I love them. Yeah. Uh, clear and reliable. What else? Effects, any, any effects? Peterson Tuners ah, right. is another company I've been with for many years. and, and well, You've got to be very picky and meticulous about your tuners, I would think. Well, the wonderful Given, thing, you know, well, they who you are. Well, they started as strobe tuners, and so they are very accurate. And they have virtual strobes now where you see the different octaves being represented and turning. But they also have an online system where you can program different tunings that you might want into your pedals whether it's stomp boxes or you know tuners like for the studio or your app or whatever and they can communicate with each other through the internet so i can send my tunings to john in new york or he can send them to me say i'm doing a, a special open tuning for this one song in just intonation pri you know prioritizing these specific notes and i'll receive it and it'll go into my pedals that's incredible that's very cool thing that is yeah all right what about the future? Is there something else that you've wanted to do and just haven't gotten around to yet? No, mostly right now what I want to do is see, see how, you know, how honest and, and simple I can make things and still have it be uh, interesting, you know, still have it be pertinent. How, how reduced down to, to basic structures that still have meaning. You know, without without any kind of extra 
gloss. Okay. Uh, you're, you're a deep thinker, and I can tell you put a lot into everything that you do. Now, let me ask you one last question, if you can imagine. What would you be if you weren't a bass player? And it has to be something outside of music. I have lots of other interests. I would love to be scholarly. You know, I would love to have, have spent my life uh, re in psychology, for example, or a racing car driver. I'm a, I'm a bit of a, a racing car driver. I'm a bit of a, a car maniac. Um, Either of those would suit me. I think it might have been Marcus Miller. There was somebody that I interviewed, and I, I asked that question to pretty much everybody, and somebody said a race car driver, and I think it might have been him. Anyway, keep playing the bass, keep doing the stuff, and it's fascinating. Just right. intonation and everything else. Good, Good luck job. with the trio, the new project, everything else. Keep us posted, and uh, maybe we shouldn't wait so many years before we do a follow-up. Well, we'll eh? do it a little quicker next time, okay? Yes, we will. All right. Thanks, On location with our good friend Hansford Rowe at the 2019 Winter Nam Show, Anaheim, California, at the Warwick booth. I'm John Liebman. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. Mm -hmm.